Hi, everyone. I am Joy, and thank you so much to Plaza Art for having me here. I'm so excited to create with you all today. Um, a little bit about me. I am an artist and teacher here in upstate New York um, in the Capital Region area. And I always, so originally, I'm going to zoom a little bit back. I'm originally from the Philippines, and then I moved to California, and my husband brought me here to New York. 25 years later, I still don't know all the places here. So when people say, we're in upstate New York, I'm always just like, ooh, capital region. <laughs> okay, so I'm in the capital region, and um, I was a teacher for 10 years in the elementary school, and now I teach art to people of all ages. And I am just so excited that you all are here today painting with me. Um, a little bit about our schedule today, we are going to play in our sketchbook. So if you have your supplies ready, I suggest you grab your sketchbook. Um, and then, yeah, I'll give you a second because some people, they, um, you forget sometimes and that's okay. Get your sketchbook, grab some Kleenex or a paper towel. And then I would love it if you guys had something to drink for yourself, all right? Because we're gonna be sitting here for a little bit and I wanna make sure that you are staying hydrated. The only thing I ask is that you keep your drink, I have seltzer here, away from your paint water, okay? Because I've been known to dip my brush into the paint water constantly and then forget, you know? The worst is if it's coffee and you, <laughs> you don't know if you actually dip in there. So I'm just letting you know, and also a reminder to myself not to, um, to do that. All right, so we'll be playing in our sketchbooks. I'll talk about the materials first. We'll do some sketchbook play and then we'll work on some pieces. So even if you don't have the materials now, if you have watercolor paper, you can get that out or mixed media paper, um, have it on the side and we'll still create some pieces that you can practice later on. All right. And then um, as I'm talking, you'll hear me say things like stay loose, be free, have fun, because that is what we want to do today. This is not something that you have to worry about. You don't have to share your sketchbook if you don't want to. We're just gonna play and have a good time. And as the wonderful folks of Plaza Art said, if you have any questions, just type it in the chat. And Tara's with me here. If I miss your question, she'll let me know. But um, yeah, so without further ado, we'll get started. I'll show you the materials that we'll be working on today. We'll start off with some of the papers. I love working in a sketchbook. When I first started my journey into watercolor, um, I just wanna let you know, I actually did not go to school for art. I went to school as a teacher and art came a little later. You know, I've been drawing and things like that, but art kinda, I'm a self-taught artist. So I'm just saying that to encourage you that you do not have to be a professional artist anybody can do this, all right? So I started in 2015 and gave myself a, um, a daily practice. And oh man, it's 2022 and I'm still doing it. So it's like, I think we're in 2,600 days later and I'm still practicing mostly because I have two boys and they won't let me quit. Like every day I'm like, I don't wanna do this anymore. I don't feel like, I don't feel like sitting on my desk and they just won't let me quit. So sometimes, my sketchbook might look like this. You know, it's just little dots on a page and that is okay. Just as long as you're showing up, even just for yourself, to give yourself just like five, 10 minutes, all right? But my very first sketchbook that I bought was a Canson Mixed Media. And it's great because you can pretty much use it for everything. Um, it, you, you can use it for acrylics, you can use it for watercolor, and it's great enough that you can carry it with you wherever you go. Um, you can even, as a Christmas present to yourself, buy yourself a new bag, get a bigger size of this. You could put, you know what I mean? That's what I do. That's my secret thing. I, I say to my husband, hey, I just bought a new sketchbook. I need a bigger bag to put my sketchbook in. So, 
<laughs> so that's a little that's a little pro tip for you if you if you want to do that you can go little little or really big but yeah so this is my um sketchbook that we'll be using then we'll work our way up we'll use some ready cut watercolor from strathmore and these are great because they are ready cut you can just use them give them to friends put them up on your wall i always put stuff up on my wall these are things that are not done yet to remind myself that I need to finish what I started. And then we'll move to watercolor cards. All right, so those are the watercolor cards. Strathmore, they come with, um, the cool thing is they come with envelopes already. So if you wanna give them as gifts, that works great. So those are the papers we'll be working on today. Then I wanna talk about the paints real fast. We're gonna be using the Aquafine Daler Rowney set. And this comes in 24. And all of this will be linked um, by Tara, all right? So if you are like, oh my gosh, I have to have that. Um, she'll have this all ready for you and you can find the links to all of these. Plus there's a coupon. I mean, who doesn't love a coupon? All right, so here is the paints. And then these are, I feel like these are magic, these watercolor inks. Um, and I use them for everything and I'll show you how I work with these. I have put them in a palette. You do not have to do that. Some people just dip right in to these ink wells and that's fine. It gets a little muddy sometimes, but that's okay. If you don't mind the messy, that's fine or you can get yourself a plate. This is just a plate for my kitchen. All right, so just grab a plate. You can plop your different paints on there if you want. I am seeing that some of you have the kitchen as your work area. That has been my work area for years until I moved to a shared space. That's great because you could wash your hands when your hands are dirty. Um, things are ready, you know, really fast. You can grab them, so that's awesome. We'll be sketching a little bit. I'll use um, I'll use pencils, but really what I like to use, these are liar pencils. What I really love to use are color pencils. I'm sure you could erase these, but for some reason in my brain, once I put down color pencils, I can't erase it. <laughs> I don't know why, I just think that. So anyway, it won't open. So I have them ready here. Prismacolor Premier color pencils. I love these so much that I also have them in, I can't throw them away. Look at, look at how tiny this one is. People say there's pencil extenders, but it's almost like a practice to, to create something with this tiny thing. But um, yeah, so those are the Prismacolor pencils. Um, let's see, we're almost through. Stay with me, brushes. The brushes that you got is slightly bigger than my eight. You got a 10 and um, so it, it should be fine. And then I also am using a four and these are Princeton Velvet Touch. And yeah, somebody mentioned the Legos, my kids, my boys, I keep stepping on Legos. I don't know if you've ever stepped on Lego before. Oh my goodness, so painful. So I have been stealing them from my children and I use them for everything, brush holders and different things like that, all right? And Tara's on it. Look, she already put it on there. And Becky asked, are inks permanent or will they be reactivated with water? I have found that they do get reactivated with water. So that's something to think about when you are um, painting. If you are not clumsy like me, you'll be fine. But I spill stuff on my desk all the time. So that is something for you to think about. All right, you are most welcome. Yes, and please type your questions into the chat. Um, I love hearing and, you know, answering questions. So yes, that is, I think those are all the things that we'll be using today. If I've forgotten something, or if I talked really fast, Plaza Art is going to be posting the recording on their YouTube page. So you can rewind and rework with me if you want to, okay? All right, let's get started. Take some deep breaths, let it go. Okay, um, somebody said, Patricia, I do not have the inks. Do not even worry, Patricia. 
You can almost mimic it by making your watercolors really watery. But if you can gift yourself these inks, you don't have to get them all. You can get them in little one, you know, bottles one at a time, but it's not going to, I'm just going to show you how I do it. And then later on, when you purchase the inks, you can play along with me again when you watch the recording. All right, we're ready. Okay, so let's get our sketchbook out. Turn to a blank page. Sketchbooks are great. I love them so much because I feel like you can mess up in them, it does not matter. Okay, these are our, in the PDF, I think you got the two um, pictures, two beautiful floral bouquets. And if you don't have it, that's okay, because I'll have it on my desk to look at. So you can look at that with me. I use two flower or a bunch of pictures all the time because I don't necessarily want to just follow one photo. I want to mix them both and I'll show you how I do that also. All right, so we'll start with one. And if you have a square, something that you can make, you know, like a straight edge, a ruler, that's the word, a ruler. If you have a ruler, you can make little squares. I'm just going to use my pre-made Lego and make a square on my sketchbook page. All right. Patricia, I know you said you don't have the inks. I'm just going back to that real quick. Um, on the supply page, it'll have the links to the inks. So you can always get that through Plaza Art, right? So here we are. I made two boxes and I don't necessarily want to use this whole page as my inspiration. So I like to make little, these are like my little viewfinders. And the cool thing about Legos, I don't know, if you don't, if you've ever played with Legos, you can make them any size you want. So you can actually just, you know, make them small. Sometimes I make art that are really, really tiny, maybe this big, whatever, whatever you feel like doing. The Legos are great. So let's see here, viewfinder. So I'm going to take my view, my pretend viewfinder, and just want to make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay, so I may frame a part like I like that, just this little corner with the rose and some flowers, or I may go down here. That anemone is beautiful. It's giving movement towards a certain place. All right or you can put it smack dab in the middle, whatever you want, okay? So take a second, um, look at your reference photo and see where you want to put your, where you want to focus. Now, if you don't have a Lego like me, no problem. This is what I do. I just fold my page, okay? I print it out and I just fold it, no worries. So then I'm just like, I'm not distracted by everything on my page. I'm just focusing on one part, okay? So I am going to, because not everybody has Lego, I'm going to just do it like this, all right? I will first start off, let's try these Lyra sketching pencils. I sometimes get into this mood where I want to use a pencil and sometimes just a color pencil. Today we'll use a pencil for one, then we'll switch off. See if I can make that even closer. There we go. All right. Now, remember, we're just being loose and we're just being messy. Um, is there, Fran has a question. Is there a way to show just you, Joy? You mean just my face? I'm in the corner, can you see? Oh, you mean, okay, I think you mean just me. So you might have to go on your view and um, I understand, Fran. Um, you just go to your Zoom view and you just um, click speaker and then it should show me. All right, 
Okay. Hopefully I have filled your screen. Yes, okay. Nice, okay, here we go. So we'll try this. We're just gonna get the expression of the rows. Our goal here is not to make the exact thing. We're just making the expression of it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna, see, look at that. I'm just making marks. It doesn't even look like a rose, does it? I'm just, here's, here's how my mind thinks as I'm working on this. I think that I'm like a bug or a butterfly and I'm just flying. Butterflies and bugs, they don't stick in one place. They go all over the place. So just kind of land here, take a second, go up, land somewhere else, take a second, buzz around, take a second, go somewhere else. All right, so you just wanna be kind of mapping yourself all over the page. You don't have to do this giant orange blob of a beautiful flower, but if you want to, just remind yourself, these are just sketches. I'm going to put this flower right here. Maybe you wanna put a rose up here because there's a hint of a rose. And that's it, that's my sketch. Right, it's just a sketch, nothing fancy. Okay, so now let's try using a color pencil. This time when I'm doing it, I'm kind of thinking the same thing, but maybe I want to go a different way. So I'll open up my page here and maybe I want to do, yeah, so would your reference photos just, you know, fold them up, print them up and fold them up. And you know what, if you have it on your phone, um, if you have it on your phone, you can just zoom in and zoom out. If you have it on a different device, zoom into the photo. Okay, we have a question by Marjorie. Which email had the demo pictures? I believe maybe we could link to the demo picture just in case. I'm working on it right this second. Yep, it was yeah. the right confirmation, yeah. completely understandable. Um, you know, it, it was, it was in a couple of places, but I'm going to give you the link and, you know, maybe it works if you're on your computer to pull the images up on your phone, like Joy just said, and then you'll, yeah. have them right you, you don't need to go print them and run off. Okay. So yeah. I'm doing that right this second. Thank you, Joy. Tara, you are amazing. And thank you. Okay. So I'm going to do this little side here and don't worry if you can't really get it, just follow what I'm doing. All right. There's like a flower in the middle. And look, I'm just making a, I'm smushing. So since I did not go to art school, my terms are gonna be definitely super artsy, like, <laughs> like, like smushing, okay? <laughs> That's not an actual art term, I don't think, but I use that all the time. Smushing, smushing your pencil, okay? And then you're gonna be, as we're going, you'll hear it. I'll say things like, keep your paints juicy, I don't know really what, what, how you would describe that in a regular art term, but you know what? We just do what we do. Okay, that flower doesn't look exactly like that, but that's okay. And then we have little vines and then more flowers here. And I am just flying around here like a butterfly doesn't even matter, All right? And Tara kindly put the in reference image into the chat link if you are interested. Okay, so there's another one. Maybe you're feeling like, okay, I'm liking this. Maybe I'll add a little paint so we can get our paints out. I almost end up turning it sideways. The cool thing about this, now I didn't take the time to do this for this particular set, but you can, the back of the, the set has all the names on it, all right? So as I'm going, I'll try to say the names, but you know what? I can't promise that I'll remember them all. So I might just say this green here, I'm liking this blue there. Um, 
So if you do get the set or any of their Dale Rowney sets, they have, they have the information in the back. I'm using my round eight, just dipping in water. Also, I have two bowls of water just because I don't wanna have to stand up so many times. So if you wanted to add some paint on there, you can. And then you might be like, I don't know if I like the, the pink showing up. And that's okay. Next time you do your sketch, maybe you could use a gray. It's all about finding what you like. And I love the way that the paints dance together. Um, and I just usually let that happen. And as you can see, I'm just, when I'm working, I'm just like super quick. Right, a good thing too, um, when you're starting and we could rewind a little bit after I add some more color to this. Maybe some purple, this one's purple. So I'm just gonna remind myself that there's a purple there. Greens. Sometimes I feel like when I'm painting, like I need to ground this. So then I just add some greens. And you can just copy what I'm doing exactly here if you want. Smushing green paint everywhere. I'm going fast, right? Sorry about that. I'll try to slow down. This pink is purple. Nope, it is the alizarin crimson. So like I said, for the purpose of this demo, I will try to remember all the names, but I might forget to say it, okay? Just, you know, if I forget, I apologize. I will try to remember. This is, I think, black. Paints gray. This is the beautiful paints gray. It's bleeding into my blue. So I'm gonna take my tissue. I'm just gonna dab it to stop the spread. Okay. So that is one of the portions here. And that's just a sketch. So it's not even what we're gonna be ending up doing, but that's just to give you ideas, all right? One of the things that I like to do, and I'll rewind here, is I, I like to practice with my brush first. So I'll take a second here and I want you to do the same with me so you know how powerful your brush is. Take a color that you absolutely love. I love blue. So I'm gonna pick a blue, just smushing it right in there. And it's always good to see how thick your paints or brushes can go. So do a couple of that on your sketchbooks, just so you can see how far you could take your brush. Then try to see if you could go really, really thin. All right, so you go really, really thick to really, really thin, and then see if you could do a thin, smush down to thick, thin, smush down, thick, thin, smush down. When I am feeling like I have no ideas and the world is like a bummer for that second, you know, I just sit down and I do some brush practice because for some reason it calms my brain and it, it gets you to, to just be like, okay, things are good. All right, so try that with your brush. I'll give you a second. And if you have any questions, just um, ask them on the chat. All right. Hi, Joy, I'm gonna answer that um, that there were two colors that came in the sample kit. You can use whatever watercolor paints that you have at home. The sample kit was just to give you a couple of colors to, to give you a, an idea of what the product is like. But whatever watercolor or, you know, Joy, I'm sure whatever paint even probably. Yes. Um, they can. Okay. Thank you. Okay, this is a great question, Claudia. Can you talk about how much water your brush should have, paint, et cetera? All right, so I think with just with me practicing a little bit, I kind of know 
this is where the brush practicing comes in. Um, how much your brush should have. I just dip really quick. I'll show you. So here's my water. I just dip really quick to clean it. I don't even have it super wet. So I dip and then I kind of take some of the excess water out. And then I weirdly just, I don't know why I do this, but I go to the paint and then sometimes I dip back in. It's just how, <laughs> it's just how I like to do it. Um, but this is definitely something that I challenge you, Claudia, to play with because what is good for me might not work for you. Like the way I'm doing it might not work for you. Um, you can only really find out by messing around with it and practicing. Um, all right, so practice a little bit more. If you have a different size brush, use that. Try to do that a little bit. The cool thing about these brushes or any round brush, I love round brushes, is they almost give you petals like or greenery. You don't even have to try hard. I think it was Bob Ross that said, make the brush do the work. All right, so you're making the brush do the work. Okay, so let's keep going. There you go. So I'm just kind of, the way you move your hand too, kind of helps. All right, so that is our first iteration. We're moving right along. Okay, let's look at our next, um, our next page and keep these handy because they will, they will, um, you know, if you keep these, we will use them again and move, use them together. Okay. Or we'll combine the different, different, different photos. All right. So here's the other one. And like I told you, I sometimes use a pencil. Definitely it is um, baseball season in my house with the two boys. So sometimes I challenge myself and I just bring a pencil um, with me to the baseball field. And, but usually when I'm doing pieces like this, just practicing, I tend to just use a color pencil because I'm just, you know, I won't erase it. In my brain, I'm like, you can't erase this, Joy. Once it's on there, you just gotta let it go, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna make smaller boxes. I'm gonna take my thing, little thing apart. And this is a three by three. So you can make a bigger box, you can make a smaller box, whatever you want. Joy, when you get a, a chance, Michelle has a has a question that uh, I'm gonna post. I'm gonna copy back into the chat. There you go. Oh yeah, it's a great question, Michelle. Can you talk a little bit about how to know when to paint, when to paint, and when to let it go? I have a heavy can. Try, okay, waiting for the paint to dry to add color. All right, so this is a great question, Michelle, and I'll try to answer. It sounds like it's two parter. Um, I have a lot of pieces that I leave and then come back to because they're all wet like as you can see this one's wet so I'll just leave it and I just go to the next page of my sketchbook I don't even it doesn't matter if it's like the front or the back so and if it gets onto my page that's okay um, another part is how to know when to paint and to when to let it go I just always let it go um in my regular life growing up, I'm very, I love things that are super mathematical and like little things have to have their place, numbers. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a cashier because I love all the buttons and the numbers and so on and just having things organized. So watercolor has revolutionized my life because I just kind of have let it go. The let it go feeling is where the magic comes in. So for me, I always just let it do its thing. But I think what you're asking is, let's say, um, I'm gonna dip into the inks here because it's in front of me. So I have an ink here and maybe it's watery and it's going everywhere. And then I'll put a different color down. 
and as it's spreading, you may or may not like that. So if you're not liking that, just take your tissue and just dab it. And leave a little mark, but that's okay. Because you can always, the power of watercolors, you can always go back and layer right on top of it. Right? I hope that answered your question, um, Michelle. Right? Okay, so now let's talk about this next one. I love how this flower is just like right in front of you, like right at the front, but maybe you don't like that. And so you might want to crop it. So I'll do that. Another wonderful question by Marjorie. What is the difference between the ink and the watercolor paint? Well, they're both watercolor. I The reason why I love these Aquafine watercolor ink is because they are just ready to go. You don't even have to wet them because they're already wet. So dip your brush and just get to painting pretty much. Whereas a palette, I have to spend a little bit of time. People spritz their palettes to have them ready to go. But sometimes I don't, I'm not really that, um, that disciplined to spritz them every time. So I just spend a lot of time smushing paint, as you can see to get it ready and then I can put it on my page. Whereas the ink, I have the blue one right here, which is the ultramarine blue. I just go in there and put it down. Okay, Claudia asked, what about tube watercolors? Great question, I love those as well. I love to use all the tools. I actually have a set of tube watercolors that I just keep with me. And I squeeze into these little metal tins and dip into them too. It's really just for me, whatever is most convenient at the time. I like to paint on the go. So with the inks, it's super fast. I just open them all up, dip, 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 go. Or if I wanna be more meditative, maybe I'll use this. I always like to combine all of them together. And this is my way of doing it. There are other artists that might choose to use it in their own way too. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, let's get to sketching on this. If you already started, kudos. I'm a little behind here, so I'll try this. But I really appreciate all the questions, so please keep them coming. Um, I'm gonna try this huge flower right now. Just drawing it here. Then just a little bit of the purple flowers here. Um, some greenery. Just remind yourself you're just flying around. Things do not have to be perfect. Your sketches are just sketches. That's what they are, a sketch. Okay, so there's my first one. Let's look at this page and guess what? You can also turn your sketch around. However you wanna do it. It's your reference photo. So if you wanna paint maybe this way, upside down you can, that little corner, that's kinda cool looking. So I'll do that. Okay, I'll fold it too. So for those of you that don't have the viewfinder, and as you can see, I'm already getting paint all over my desk. It's just how it is, you know? You just have to be ready. That's why I still order, my kids are a little bit older, I still order wipes because I have to have them all over my house. All right. Okay. Okay, so Tara put in reading. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Tara. Why don't you why don't you talk about it a little bit? Oh, okay. People... Yeah. Sure. So <clears throat> 
I have no control over what the manufacturers of the products that we sell call them. But I think inks can be a little bit confusing um, in terms of, you know, what they are a liquid watercolor that is very highly pigmented. So you end up with a very fluid version of what's in your pans or what's in your tubes, but in liquid form. So if you wanted to work straight out of the bottle and have that really bright saturated color without adding water, you might really like inks. If you want to do more traditional, the watercolor inks, if you want to do more traditional work than adding, and you can still add water to the inks and get them to that same transparency, but um, they're just, they're just a different um, application. And I recommend everybody kind of play around with the different types to find what suits your style the best. So yes. I hope that helped a little bit. Joy had a great explanation that really they are all just different forms of watercolor. Mm -hmm. I thought that might be helpful. Yeah, awesome, thank you. I also love using these um, inks, watercolor inks. Tara, should I be calling them watercolor inks, right? In the tube or liquid watercolor? <laughs> I mean, yeah, watercolor I mean, they inks. call them, they call them watercolor inks. I right. can call them whatever you want. I just, they really are liquid watercolors. But either yeah. Way. Yeah. Okay, so the liquid watercolor, what I like to do too is I like to use the dropper as the paintbrush. So then I just, you know, because I like messy art, just use it like that too. All right, so you, there's many different ways you can use this. And dipping right into there is just um, one of the ways to do it. That's the, that's the fun part about having a sketchbook. I don't know if I've already said that 500 times. I feel like I have. Um, it's just great to play in there, see what the tools do, and see if you like liquid watercolors. See if you like the ones that are in the tube. The tubes are great and the pans are great, especially if you're traveling. Um, I, I like carrying them around. All right, so Anne asked, do you shake the ink to mix? Um, I just like to shake it just to activate it a little bit. Sometimes some of the pigments settle in the bottom sometimes. So then just to shake it a little bit helps. Um, not all of them do that. You can see they're kind of concentrated some on the bottom. So if you shake it, it kind of livens things up. All right. So let me do a quick sketch here of this flower. Everybody doing okay? I hope you're doing okay. If you need to take a drink break, go ahead. Hydrate, especially in this weather. So I'm just doing these weird leaves right here. Okay. So I'm not even paying attention to the whole composition. I'm sure some of you, when you saw this page, you're just like, we're doing the whole thing. You're not, okay? We're just doing little parts of it. But if you want to do the whole thing, I, I would love to see that, okay? Um, so we're just doing little parts of it. Okay, now what if you wanna combine the two, right? If you wanna combine the two, you can do that. Let me make me myself a different square. Also, one of the things that I do when my pages are still wet is I sometimes, I'm gonna tear a piece of paper here, okay? I just put a piece of paper in between and then I turn to the new page, all right? So if you don't want them bleeding into each other, put another piece of paper in there, just a cheap copy paper. I sometimes tape it on there and then go on to the next page. So you don't have to wait for your paint to dry all the time. You can just keep creating if you want. This time we will take pieces of the ones we like and then we'll put it on our sketchbook. But please keep those questions coming. You're learning things, I'm learning things. Tara's answering all our questions. Thank you, Tara. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. As a teacher, I always love to give homework whenever I do classes. So I'm gonna give you homework. 
um, for you, those of you that like to do homework, why don't you take this even a little further? I just did two sketches. Why don't you do three or four? Sometimes if you do three or four, you can come up with some amazing, amazing designs and flower combinations that you never would have thought of. And then you can turn it into a painting. So that is my challenge for you. Or even get outside, take pictures of flowers, um, see how you can combine them together. So I'll show you a little bit of how I do that. Maybe I'll take this beautiful flower in the middle and I'll put it here. And as you can see, I'm just, when I'm sketching, I'm just smushing my pencil, going around. I'm just doing the, it's almost like the energy of the flower, if you can call it that. The, not necessarily the exact flower, just the expression of it. Because this is a loose watercolor painting. You don't have to have it perfect. All right. And then I really like the blue flower back there. So I'll remind myself there's a blue flower back there. Then I'll look at my other sketch. I love these leaves at the top, so I'll add that. Now, I'm not requiring you to do that right now because it might be hard to toggle back and forth to the different photos. I'm doing this one, right? Okay, so we're just doing the expressions of the flower not the exact. So here I like the purple. So I'll just remind myself to put that there. So these are like little mini compositions that you could do. And then add yourself some greenery. Those are greenery. Maybe you want to add some color to that. So I'll do that. Take some of the orangey. Ooh, see, that's the thing. Like. I put the paint down and I'm like, whoa, I'm inspired by that. Um, I'm taking some magenta and just mixing it all around. Also, one of the things that um, I like to do when I'm doing a loose style is um, I don't necessarily, and you, some of you that are very, um, like to have things just so, might not like to do this and that's fine. I usually just mix, I dip in one paint and then I also dip in another, right? Sometimes I do that. And that might be a no-no, but I like how that works. See how that looks? I just dipped this orangey one with this pinkish one, pressed it down and it made a different beautiful color. And then so maybe, I love that so much that I'll make myself one on the side but you do not have to do it that way. Okay, this is a blue. Just a lot of swishing of the brush down. And all, already you're coming up with some flowers. Adding some green. And here's another, joy trick that I do is if I want to fill a page I and I don't feel like painting everything I might just do lines okay so you can add lines and that kind of fills it or you could do dots dots are great lines and dots okay and then what was this one I think it was this one. no it was the blue flower So maybe I'll use some of the brown watercolor ink. And then I'll throw in some of the concentrated liquid watercolor to go around it. And think of these as like your mini compositions that you might want to turn into paintings later. Everybody doing okay? All right, I'll give you a second.
because it looks like some of you are just really concentrating. And I don't want to rush you. Add some green there. I love the dark, dark greens. I try to always find the dark greens. Ooh, that made a new green. I think that is a leaf green. Nope. The Viridian Hue with the Payne's Gray made this amazing green. Look at that. Okay, Susan, how do you give an illusion of a glass vase? Okay, so maybe that's a great question. So while everybody is doing their thing, a glass vase to me, an illusion of one, I would just go like that. You know, just make yourself, um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you could just do with a light blue. And then maybe with a shadow, with a darker blue, you can add shadow underneath. Give it yourself an illusion of a vase. Now I feel like my vase needs to be filled. So I'll add some flowers. <laughs> I can't leave it alone. I must add some flowers. Susan, I hope that helps. Also, you can, this is also something I do, is I go back with my colored pencil and just add some details just to anchor it. So for me, this would be my loose way of a glass vase. I hope that answers your question. There we go, just a little bit, just a little bit of the table maybe. You actually just make it up as you do it, whatever you feel like looks good for you. Oh no, oh no, I can't stop. I have to stop. <laughs> you know how like when you start something and then you're like, I have to add more. All right, you're welcome, Susan. Thank you for that question, I appreciate it. Okay, we have one more box. We got one more box. What should we do here? Well, I will give you a second. You kind of look at it and see which picture you like best. See if you want to combine. I'm missing some yellow. So maybe I will turn it this way. See how this one has some yellow up here? Since your sample kit has yellow, let's use some of that. I'll hold my paper down. All right. Okay, so maybe just this portion. A lot of origami that comes also with this type of <laughs> creating. You're learning origami, you're learning sketching. All right, here we go. Okay, so this time I am not gonna sketch first. I'm just gonna kind of mess around and see how it works with the flowers. Okay, so I'm dipping in the concentrated watercolor ink. And this has been sitting here for a little bit, but look how magical this is. You just put some water, it just reactivates also. You can dip in the brush right into the glass or you could pour some. I'm very stingy sometimes when it comes to this kind of paint. I like to, I've had bottles since 2015 that are like not even half done because I only use a little bit at a time. But um, like Tara said, they're super concentrated. So they go, a little goes a long way is what I'm trying to say with these things. Okay, a question, Patricia, how do I measure the amount of paint I put on my brush? Seems I take too much every time. That's a great question. So if you feel like you're taking too much every time, have your um, sketchbook at the ready or on the side and kind of measure it. So here I'm taking some red and you can kind of see, okay, so do you like that or do you not like that? Do it again. If it's too much, add a little water. Is that too watery for you? Just kind of experiment. And then if it's still too watery, you could always just go to water first or put your paint down and then water it down. But if you take too much every time, don't smush as much. And then either on your page or on a tissue, you can actually just take some of the paint off. Sometimes that feels good to just take some of the paint off and then, oops, I took too much off. There's nothing coming through. 
All right, I hope that answers your question. Okay, so on this one, I'm just gonna try. Remember, we are just, I loaded it up. There's pigment in there, one dip. We're trying to be loose, we're trying to be free. Like a little butterfly or a bee, just roaming around in the garden, okay? Does not have to look exactly like that, but you can have it look like that if you want to. The yellow at the top, taking some of the yellow ochre, giving a little bit of a yellow up here. And I'm just really letting the brush kind of do the work. I'm just kind of dipping and dabbing. Taking some of the green from my pan and adding that. And if it's mixing together, if they want to dance, let them dance or you can stop it with a tissue. That's what I did. Spreading a little bit a lot, or it's spreading a little bit a lot. <laughs> It's spreading over there, so I'm just gonna stop it. And then you can add another color on top like I showed you earlier. There's this beautiful blue in the corner right there. So I'll just, I don't know, there's a pattern forming. I seem to have blues on the corner. See, you'll notice these things about yourself. Like you're adding things that are the same over and over. That just means, hey, Maybe I need to add that to my painting. My, I'm, you know, my brain is going towards that. Just adding some green. I'm not doing all the little purple flowers because I'm not feeling like adding those right now, but there's a lot of these little leaves. So I'll add that. Can you talk about from Adele how you use the white space in your flower? Sure. The white space to me, I kind of like those, the parts that are kind of light. I either just leave white and then go back to it. Or I sometimes it's accidental. I'm just trying to give a illusion of the flower. So I leave the highlights white. Um, just with practice, it's just something that my brain does automatically that when I see that. So that's something to think about. But if you do forget, there's always like acrylic paints that are white or gouache paints that are white, that if you want to add the highlight, if you're like, oh man, I forgot to add some white to this, you can always go back and add that, right? Or even like a crayon, or a, you know, a, a white pencil, you know, just put it in there if you want. Um, but for me, it's just you know, from practicing, my brain just kind of says, oh, there's white there. So, or there's a highlight there. So I will leave it automatically in my brain. But um, I hope that answers your question, Adele. But if you are working, working, and then you're like, oh man, like I said, you forget the white, just you can use acrylics or other colors to add to it. But that is a great thing to remember. Um, white is very powerful when it comes to these pieces. So add some of the white if you want. As you can see, I'm not really doing a lot of the super white florals, but if I was to do this, maybe I'll just mush a gray, okay? So I'll try to find like a gray or even like a light blue, just mixing, mixing that together here. And then put it on the corner, give it an illusion of a flower. It's really just, it's almost like you're a magician. You're just giving illusions. You're not really doing the whole thing. 
That's the trick. Not doing the whole thing, you're giving illusions, and then you take your color pencil and then you finish it up. You add the outside, which here you can't really see because it's kind of messy, but how, there's another question by, okay, so Carolyn, do you use watercolor crayons and puzzles? I do. I use them all the time. Um, I'm sure Plaza Art has some watercolor pencils also. Is that correct, Tara? Yes, okay, so they have watercolor pencils and yes, I use them all the time. Um, just on top, like here, I'll use my personal color pencil and I will add some more details if I wanted to make it a little bit messier or I can take, I accidentally picked up a watercolor pencil. It's, it's interesting that you said that and I'll dip my watercolor pencil into my water and just, you know, make marks with it, All right? Um, next question here, how do you put a color background? Do you start by painting the whole page and then add the painting? You mean the back? Yes. So I'll leave it like this and then maybe later on come back when it's dry and then I'll add the background. So that is a wonderful question. And Tara put the link into um, some color pencils that are water soluble, which is great. All right. Okay. So now we have been uh, we have a lot of sketches to work from. We have a bunch of sketches to work from. Let's look at them quickly and see. I love seeing people's work. So. Please tag Plaza Art. I'm gonna have this little page here. Take a screenshot if you want, right? Hashtag create with Plaza Art or painting with joy or both. Please tag us both. We'd love to see your artwork. Um, and here, you know, I'd love to see what your sketches look like. So as we're going through this, I also wanted to mention this. I'll give it another second so you can see it. My website is hydroiting. I'm at Joy Chard. There's at Plaza Art. Okay. So share and tag us with your work because I'd love to see. Even though we're all working together, I know for sure your art, our art, our, our, you know, our interpretations are all different. And I just love seeing what people create. All right. So let's look back and see which ones you like. <laughs> Mine's all sticky. That's going to happen. All right. And now we're gonna move on to a couple of cards or final pieces that we can use. So let's see here. Take a look, see which one you like. I, I kind of like this blue one. So I think I'm gonna do that. So now I'm actually working for my sketch, but I also have the photo handy so that I don't um, forget what it looks like. All right, so I'll put it up here. Also, it's great to have two things of water. So when one water is done, you have another one, you don't have to get up. But if you have to go get water, now's a good time. I'm going to take a quick sip. Hydrate with me if you wish. And so I'm gonna use that. I'm going to take one of my watercolor pages, these little watercolor cards from Strathmore, ready cut watercolor. A lot of people do little frames around them. So what that is, is you could use um, masking tape. And I'm sure Plaza Art has masking tape or art tape. All right. And so Tara's going to, the wonderful Tara is going to put that on the link for you. And you could just put a border around your work or you don't have to, you could just go for it. The cool thing about having a border is it feels great to take it off. So I sometimes put the border on there just because once you take the tape off, it's like, ah, feels good. So anyway, if you wanna do it that way. Okay. I'm trying to orient myself here. So if you have any questions, now is a good time to ask. I like to have all of my tools around me in easy access. 
So when I'm working, to just dip and go, okay? So I am surrounding myself with the tools. So thank you for your patience as we get ready to, I'm actually gonna tape mine a little bit because it's moving around. I think you got, you received some Strathmore, couple of sample papers from Strathmore in your sample kit. So let's use that. All right, I'm gonna tape my page. Okay, hopefully you can see that okay. All right, so I love this blue flower, which is also in this picture. So I'm gonna try to keep that in mind while I am working, as you can see. I'm trying to show you everything here. There we go. All right. So I like how it's at the bottom. I turned my page around. Let's see. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but um, no, no. Danielle has a question that um, might keep her from moving on. So I just want to make sure. So oh, yeah. um, the pre cut paper is a little different on each side. Is there a right or wrong side? Um, I know it's a cold press sheet, but there might be one side with a little bit more texture than the other. So what do you recommend? Yes. Um, this one, oh, you said these are cold press, right? Um, yeah. which or, one I, I believe so. I could be wrong. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, I always like to work on the smooth side some days, and then some days I like to work on the rough side. So that doesn't really answer your question, but I think, um, they give you two, so maybe make one on the soft side or the one that's smooth, and then make one on the other side so that you can, you know, figure out which one you like best. Okay, they seem to be pre folded. Are those the cards, Tara? Did they get cards? Or no? One said they seem to be pre folded. Um, I, I thought they got the pre cut sheets. Okay. If you got the either way, it's the same surface yeah. on the you know on the. Uh, but if they did get cards, then that could be why is because yeah. the inside of the card is smoother, outside of the card card is cold press. All right. Oh, they people are saying. <laughs> Yay! Right. Okay, so if you got both, that's fine. Yeah, we got both sheets and cards. Oh my goodness! So for the um, for the cards, I am I just would use the smooth side since that's how it's folded. But if you wanted to, um, so let's see here. Danielle said there's no wrong or right, which is what I was thinking. Yes, there's no wrong or right. As you, I don't know if you, you know, I like to just say experiment with what you like, but you know, the cool thing about these cards, you can also fold them the other way. Okay, so if you like the smooth side, go for the smooth side. If you like the rougher side, the one with the more tooth, will absorb a little bit more paint. Um, so there you go. Okay, so we'll get started here. We'll start with this. Um, we're staying loose, so keep that in your mind. Loose and not perfect. And you already have a little map of a sketch. Hopefully you picked the sketch that you like. And so here's my little map of how I want to interpret. And I'm trying to show you both at the same time, but I don't know. There we go. There's the hint of my sketch. And then here's my paper. Um, and here's the other one to remind me of how it looks. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and start with some blue. And I'm just smushing it down on the page. And the petals are like, thick and some of them are a little bit darker on one side so that's what I'm doing now as you can see I'm just I don't have any paint on my my brush I'm just kind of pressing down with some water this is the magic part <gasps> see that it's just like they combine. I don't know. I, I always, I still, I still say, wow, I've been doing this for a while and I'm just still wowed by how it works. So I'm just kind of 
reusing the pigment that I already have on the page and I'm slowly adding it around. I don't know about you, but I have already splattered on my page and that's okay for me. I like, I like those little um, marks that say, this is handmade. I painted this for you. You know what I mean? So it does not have to be perfect. Okay, which brush am I using? I am using a round um, number eight. I think in your sample pack, you got a number 10. It'll just be slightly bigger, right? Okay. So you don't have to do all the petals here. Putting the brown in the middle, or if you have a black, do that. Just kind of dabbing it in there. And as you can see, since this is a loose interpretation and loose painting, things are gonna spread. So I have my tissue handy. And it almost, the cool thing about tissue is it actually almost gives another texture to your page. It's like, uh, it's like, whoa, see, like the petals, it adds a little bit to it. All right, so now it has petals all around. So I'm thinking about right, that right now. Maybe I'll take some blue. And if I feel like, I'm trying to think, if I'm feeling like maybe I have too much on my brush, I'll just dab it a little bit and then try it out. These are just the little peekaboo ones at the back. And as you can see, this flower is not necessarily the same as this flower, but that's okay. I'm gonna take the purple. If you have a purple, just grab it. And I am going to, I love this purple flower here, so I'm going to add that. And I'm just smushing the paint down. And then I'm just dragging one of the sides over. So smush and drag. I mixed a little blue with a little bit of my purple just to give a darker pigment and I'm smushing and dragging again. If it's too much, I'll take some off. Okay, take some green and add to my flower. This is really up to your interpretation, how you want it to look. See how it's pulling over here? So I'll just take my tissue and dab it down. Yeah, the rougher side is definitely gonna show more texture um, when you're painting and you can feel it when you're painting on it. Um, it absorbs a little bit more of the paint. Um, and then the smoother side, I, I tend to use both sides. I, I don't really have a preference here. When I taped it down, I taped the smooth side down. So definitely something to experiment with. But yeah, some, some people really like the rougher side and some people like the ones, you know, with the cold press that's a little bit more um, smooth. So I'm adding a flower over here. Just taking some red, adding a little bit of orange. And like I said, um, this, if you're liking the way this looks on the page, the Baylor Rowney, the link will be um, in the description, or I think you got that supply list from Plaza Art Paper, so you can see what kind of paints I'm working with. 
It's a lot of like painting and dipping, painting and taking out, right? So that's where the experiment comes in. It's looking a little bit empty up here, so I'll add a few buds. And these buds are just a smush of paint. It's a circle of paint. Then I'll take my tissue, press down, and it takes some of it away and almost is like, whoa, there's a strange little flower there. So really, you're letting your brush do the work and you're letting, that's a combination of brush and tissue. Then I'll take my number four, smaller brush to add some some of the leaves that maybe are missing. And for this, for the leaves, I'm just I'm just kind of starting tiny or thin and then smushing down, thin and smushing down. Right? Always good to add just extra little greenery. Flowers are great because they don't, people will know that you're drawing a flower or painting a flower without it having to look exactly like the flower you're painting. So I think that's why I tend to do nature things all the time because they don't have to be perfect. All right, so just add your little marks. Now I'm gonna take, while that's drying, I'm gonna take my color pencils and these are the personal color pencils. I just can't throw them away, like I said. So I just keep them in a little bowl and I'm just gonna add some details. Maybe some leaves that are not filled in. Right? So think of yourself, like I said, don't be stuck on one spot, move around, move around your page. So I'm going to the blue flower, even though it's still wet. Look how amazing these watercolor pencils are. You can just draw right on top. So I'm just making it look like a flower some more by adding a sketch. For the red, Flower up here, take an orange and just kind of add some of that. I just like adding purple, you know, like different lines, different places. I, I just want you to, when you come away with this, I just want you to know that this does not have to be perfect. It could just be for fun. Just sit down, relax, do some flowers if you want, or even if you don't wanna do a flower, just do some brush practice. Things that are not there, but maybe I wanna add another bud, but maybe I'm not gonna color it in, right? So it's up to you. So the great thing, like I said, about this is you could let it dry. It, mine's kind of dry a little bit already. And you can re-layer on top. So if you wanted to. That's also another cool thing about watercolor. I just love how you could build layers upon layers on top of it super powerful tool. A lot of people are scared of it and I totally understand that because I was scared of it for the longest time. But once you start really playing with it, um, I don't know, I've fallen in love with it and it has changed the way I look at life. If an art, if an art tool can do that, <laughs> it has taught me to let go, to not be so precious, to just enjoy that and it has really spilled over to my regular life um you know when things happen i'm just like it's okay right so that is the first piece 
So you can leave it as is. Like I said, you'll you'll have to tag us. I'd love to see what these look like. And you can just take mine off, put it to the side, and we'll do in one more. I'm gonna do a card. Some of you got cards, some of you did not. Not to worry. Um, you can always purchase these wonderful cards over at the Plaza Art. They will have them ready for you. They're also in your, um, it's also linked into the description. And um, let's see here, the team, team Plaza Art is just amazing. They're on it like constantly, like whenever I mention something, it's like, hey, here's the link. Thank you guys. Um, so if you need anything, check the links out and they will have that for you. Okay, so my second sketch or drawing, I'm going to actually try to do this one, okay? So I'm gonna use the card. I'll use the rougher side this time because last time I did the smooth side, so you can kind of see. Um, this one has texture, and if you like your paper to have texture, that's great. I just want to show you different ways of doing these things. My way does not have to be the only way, right? So I'm going to work on that flower right there, which is kind of right here. It has that yellow. And you will get paint on your hands, and that's OK. All right, let's sketch first this time around. I'm going to pick my light pink so it doesn't show up so much. You can use a pencil if you wish. I'm going to do the flower here. Just the map, like your Google Maps, just to let you know where to go, where to turn. I'm just adding a little bit of um, the yellow. And sometimes when you're, even when you're drawing on, when you have your Google Maps, you get lost still. You maybe turn the wrong way and it reroutes you. So things are not necessarily on this page, but I'm just rerouting and re-adding things that maybe I would want to add or wasn't on my page, but I'm like, oh, I feel like adding this now. Right, so there is my super light sketch. I guess you can't really see it as well. So I'll go back to the red. There we go. Like I said, when I'm working, I don't mind those uh, marks showing. I just, I, I love that people know that I, worked on this, there's a sketch underneath, it's just the practice. Okay, so that's my map. And I'll get started. So I'm taking the liquid watercolor here. And remember that brush practice where I did thin lines, smoosh down, then thick lines, smoosh down. I'm just mimicking that. Thin, smush, thick, smush dance, or thin again. Okay, it might not look exactly like this flower that we have here, but that is okay. You're creating your own garden. And I'm leaving some of the white just to give an illusion of, it's just an illusion. of the highlights. The center is really dark, so I'll take some orange. That's not orange. <laughs> I'll take some brown and I'll put it on there. Okay, it does not look like the page, but that's okay. I'll take some of the yellow, smush some paint down. There we go. And if things show up, that's okay. Take some green. So you just remember 
you're wanting to be loose. This is a loose watercolor practice. You're not trying to have it be perfect, perfect. You're keeping things nice, loose, and free. And messy. I always like to, to add messy on there. Because it does not have to be perfect. It's coming from your artist hands. This is a giant blue blob, which does not even look like a flower, but that's okay. Cause what I'll do is later on with my color pencil, I'll put details. And I'll show you that before we go here. This, cl this class, I mean, I feel like time, we just started and time is flying by. We have five minutes. We have five minutes, guys. Oh my goodness. Don't rush though, take your time. And if we don't finish, that's okay. That means you just get homework that you get to do. And then you get to show it to us later on. All right, so I'm just adding some leaves and how I'm doing the leaves, I wanna show it to you again. I'm going thin, 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 and then thick again. Oops, thin and then thick, smushing down. Right, liquid ink, put some blue there just to add some blue, missing some colors here. So I'll just add there. I'm just jumping around, it's like a bee. It's a bee or a butterfly mindset where you're not stuck in one place, you're jumping flower to flower. Color pencil. Okay, great question for Linda. I'm sending this as a card. Oh, that is wonderful, Linda. Do I need to do anything to set the paint? Usually I just let it dry. If you wanna put it under like a plastic maybe, so it's protected after it dries, but you don't have to spray it or anything. Um, I, I've never sprayed any of mine. And these are artist grade paints, so they should last. Um, do you have anything to add about that, Tara? What do you think about the spraying? Uh, I normally don't spray my For water. cards, no. For cards, yeah. definitely. Would, there are finishes um, that are UV resistant for finish work and that kind of thing. But I, I think watercolor, um, my personal opinion anyway, is that, okay. you know, watercolor especially if you're doing cards and sending them out you know that don't there's more risk to kind of messing up the artwork than there is to um you know not to say you can't get good at, at um protecting with products but it's definitely not required for a card mm -hmm. but what you might want to do if you have a piece of tracing like like joy was saying a piece of tracing paper to slip in the envelope or something like that but that's not necessary yep Thank you, Tara. Okay, we have another question. How do you keep the brush from separating, the bristles separate and strands of paint along the brush stroke? Okay, so maybe when you take it out of the water, before you put it in, just kind of finesse it. Like, give it a little bit of a loving touch, put them all together, put it back. But then if it keeps doing it in the bristles, you can always cut some of those out. I've done that with scissors, just cut some of the bristles out um, that separate, um, but that's me. Like I said, I don't have the patience to kind of mess with things. I like for things to go fast. So that's what I would do. Um, just adding some black to that to add. All right, um, let's see. Thank you so much, enjoyed it. Oh, I'm so glad. And I think we are about, at the end here, I don't know if Tara wants to say anything else, but I just want to say, hang on one second. This was a wonderful, I just enjoyed spending so much, so much time with you all. Thank you. Thank you for signing up and for taking the time to create with me. I hope you tag us. All right.
and let us know if you have any questions. And Tara, I'll leave it up to you.